Okay, welcome to everyone. Uh, I'm Enrico Zimuel. I work for Zen Technologies in the Zen Framework uh, team. And today I would like to introduce you to the new version of Zen Framework, Zen Framework 2. These are a couple of information about me. If you want to reach me by email, by Twitter, or even if you want to comment some post on my uh, website, that is basically my surname, zimuel.it. Uh, you are more than welcome. OK, just jump to the presentation, because we have a lot of slides and uh, not enough time. OK, so uh, Zen Framework 2 in a slide. So basically, as you know, uh, we are still uh, in uh, beta of Zen Framework 2. Uh, we are getting very, very close to the stable release. Uh, basically, the Zen Framework 2 is the new version of Zen Framework. Uh, you need PHP 5.3 in order to use it, because, of course, we want to be able to use the last technology of PHP, so like uh, namespaces, uh, closure, uh, and so on. It's more flexible compared with Zen Framework 1. That means uh, that is basically based on events and uh, service. So everything in uh, Zen Framework 2, and I will show you in a couple of minutes, um, the MVC of uh, the new MVC architecture of Zen Framework 2 is completely event-driven architecture. So everything is an event. So I will show you how it's easy to handle events and changing the flow uh, according uh, on your needs, of course. It's much more performant compared with Zen Framework 1. Uh, we work a lot uh, caring about performance. So for instance, we have a, a new auto-loading system that is much more performance uh, of the old one. And we have also uh, a lot of uh, you know, hidden gems, let's say, inside uh, the architecture of Zen Framework 2. Uh, it's completely uh, open process, so we removed the CLA. So if you want to contribute to the framework, you don't have to sign uh, you know, a contract uh, anymore. So we use GitHub, so it's very, very easy to contribute to the, the project. Just fork the project, send a PR pull request, and uh, that's it. So you have no excuses now, so you have to contribute to the framework. And we also uh, released uh, a couple of ways to install, basically, uh, the Zen framework and uh, uh, you know, all the packages of Zen framework. So we support Pyrus. We support uh, Composer. That is a new packaging system uh, for PHP. Very, very nice. And of course, we support also Git, uh, the Git submodels. The Zen Framework 2 is a completely new uh, framework. Uh, so basically, we start from scratch, rewriting uh, the main, uh, uh, you know, uh, the main uh, uh, components. So the, the new MVC is completely new uh, because basically we started to. Uh, create a new architecture based on uh, uh, event-driven services. So we didn't have the opportunity to reuse the old uh, uh, Zen Framework 1 uh, code. And uh, that's, uh, that's why we are uh, uh, taking uh, a lot of time to release uh, uh, you know, the, the stable version, because basically it was uh, a completely uh, a new project. And in this slide, you can see you know, the, the main differences uh, so, for instance, uh, using the same pattern in Zen Framework 1, we used uh, you know, singleton register. Uh, we had a lot of uh, hard-coded and uh, self-dependencies. Uh, using Zen Framework 2, basically, we don't use this design pattern, so it's much more uh, open. Uh, we released the Zen Framework 2 Beta 4 a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the plan is to release uh, the beta 5 at the end of this month, and after that, we want to release the release candidate. So uh, during this summer, we, the plan is to release the first 2.0 version release candidate. So we are very, very close to, 
to this, uh, to this goal. Okay, so I mentioned a couple of patterns that we used in uh, the new Zen framework uh, uh, two uh, projects. Uh, basically, we uh, used a lot the, the contract-oriented design. Uh, we, we don't use any more you know, uh, inheritance. For instance, in the Zen framework one, there was an exception class, and uh, each component inheritance from uh, the Zen exception uh, component. Uh, now we have uh, just an interface that is exception for uh, each uh, subcomponent. Um, so it's much more, you know, simple, and the architecture is uh, well uh, um, is well designed. And of course, we use dependency injection in order to decoupling, uh, you know, components inside the, the Zen framework too. So this is very very uh, important. Okay, the, what is the dependency uh, injection? Very very simple. So basically, instead of have uh, R code dependencies inside your uh, your classes, you can just pass uh, uh, in constructor, for instance, or using uh, a method like uh, a setter, uh, the object that you want to uh, that you want to use. Uh, here there is just uh, an example. So we have three classes: foo, bar, and baz. And the class baz uses the foo and the bar classes. So that means the class Baz needs two other components, two other objects in order to work. Th this is the general uh, uh, you know, uh, design pattern. I mean, wh what is the dependency injection? In uh, Zen Framework 2, we have a component that is Zen the DI. Uh, basically implements uh, a DI container. So we support uh, the three different uh, way to inject objects. So we support the uh, injection by construct, by interface, and setter. So you have three options, basically. Uh, you can use a configuration or annotation in order to configure your uh, uh, dependency injection. And we provide also a compiler that is able to auto-discover the dependency in your project. So of course, you need uh, to execute, to run the compile in order to provide the configuration, but it's quite, uh, it's quite fast and is uh, automatically. So here there is an example of uh, the definition. So basically, uh, in the previous uh, slide, I showed you three classes. Um, and uh, there was a class Baz that was, depends on the class Foo and the class Bar. So that is the way to configure the ZenDI in order to uh, instru instruct um, uh, the DI container. So basically, as, as you can see here, we have a, a construct that is uh, uh, required. So that means you, uh, this class bus needs uh, the class foo in uh, the construct, and also needs the class bar using the set bar. Also, as you can see here, is, uh, is uh, required. And uh, that's it. So it's very, very simple. We use uh, array, associative array, in order to configure the dependencies. And uh, in this slide, is reported just uh, you know, a couple of lines uh, in order to use the configuration. So we have uh, uh, two components here, Zen DI, DI and Zen DI configuration. So basically, the DI, we have DI and the configuration. We just pass the previous uh, array. And uh, that's it. I mean, if I need uh, the class buzz, I can use the get method, and uh, the DI container will set the dependency. So basically, the, this object, $buzz, will contain the class foo and the class bar. So that is uh, the, the DI container. Of course, there are a lot of other use cases. This is just a, a very simple uh, example. And if you are interested, you can check it out uh, uh, the GitHub account of Ralph Schindler. That is one of my colleagues uh, in the Zen Framework team, uh, where you can see a lot of uh, different use cases, more even using annotation and other, um, for instance, interface injection uh, and so on. 
But the eye is very nice, is very, very good, you know, to build a, a solid uh, architecture, but sometimes it's slow. It's for some people that have no computer science uh, background, it's hard to learn, uh, and it's often hard to debug. So that's why we also provide, uh, uh, let's say, it's not uh, like an alternative, but it's uh, uh, something that you can use without uh, DI, that is the service manager. So basically, the service manager is very fast, so we don't use magic or discovering uh, technology inside. It's just code, so you don't have to configure nothing. You have just to write uh, your uh, injection with code. And it's explicit, explicit wiring. So uh, that means that debugging is much more simple. We have a lot of different kind of services. So basically, we can say uh, um, that we have basically uh, explicit services. So you can define uh, a name with uh, uh, an object. We have invocables. That basically means that you can define name where with the class to, um, to be instantiated. We have factories, we have aliases, we have a different kind of uh, uh, services. And uh, I just reported a couple of examples. So basically, uh, here we are, um, the service manager, uh, you can think about uh, um, a container of objects. That's uh, is more or less what it is. Uh, you can define the object that you want to uh, insert in the service container. And you have a lot of different ways to do that. So here is the, just uh, the more example. So um, we are defining uh, uh, a service. So we define here uh, a key that is the service name and the object that we want to store in the service container. That's it. Uh, why we are using this design partner? Because in your project, you can easily get back the object uh, using uh, the key. Uh, wh wherever you are. So if you are in a controller, if you are in a, in a model, in bootstrap, uh, whatever you are, you can just easily uh, share object between you know, your classes, and this is a way to, uh, to do that, basically. We have also different kind of, we have other uh, um, services, as I mentioned before. So we have uh, invocables that basically are value that are valid class names to instantiate. For, for instance, you, uh, here we have uh, the user input uh, uh, filter. Sorry, there is a mistake here. And this is the, uh, the namespace of that component. We have also factories. So that means you, you are able to provide uh, um, a factory to the service, uh, service manager. Uh, so for instance, here we are uh, uh, using the uh, an anonymous uh, function, user form, and we are getting uh, uh, the user input filter. So it's a way to you know, put some uh, code inside your uh, service manager. We have also aliases. So you can say something is, uh, uh, you, basically you can uh, create alias uh, on the fly. And you have also uh, an abstract factories, that means uh, if your uh, service uh, manager is not able to find uh, um, the, the object, the key, this is like uh, a fallback. So um, here is just an example. So you have to specify uh, the class that implements an abstract factory interface, and you have uh, you know, methods in order to discover, to provide uh, um, the service. You can also say that uh, some of your services are not shared, setting uh, uh, the false value to the name of the service. For instance, if you want to uh, provide uh, um, a service that is instantiated uh, each time, every time, you can easily manage in that way. So basically, uh, as I said, you can use uh, the service uh, manager uh, anywhere in uh, an application configuration, in uh, class, in modules classes, in uh, uh, whatever you want. So it's a way to share object uh, inside uh, your projects. 
Okay, I mentioned that everything is basically an event in the new MVC architecture of Zen Framework 2. So we provide a special classes that is the, an event manager. Uh, just a few uh, terminology here. An event manager is an object that aggregates listener for one or more events. And of course also trigger uh, the events. So we have a listener that basically are callbacks that can react to an event. And uh, we have events that are basically action. Event manager is able to trigger events and listen to and react to trigger events. That's it. So it's very, 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 very simple. Here uh, we have an example. So we are attaching uh, to the event manager the event do. This is uh, another anonymous function just uh, uh, to print some uh, you know, information getting from um, uh, the parameter in input. Uh, and we can uh, trigger the events, so we can say, okay, I want to trigger the events do, uh, passing uh, a couple of parameters, and this second uh, uh, parameter basically is the scope, where the events lives. So you can say, for instance, I want to trigger an event in a class, I want to trigger uh, an event uh, in the global scope, uh, for instance, this is the case, passing the null uh, value and so on. So you can limitate you know, the, the life of your events in uh, specific uh, uh, components. Okay, the new MVC architecture. So everything is an event, so basically we have uh, three main uh, steps in the MVC. We have the bootstrap, the routing, and the dispatch. That's it. Each of these steps can have multiple listeners. So you can, uh, of course, we provide a default uh, listener for normal flow, and I will show you. Uh, but you can uh, inject your events, you can create your events, and attach to one of these three main components. So it's very, very easy to change the flow of an application using uh, uh, Zen Framework 2. We have basically three core concepts here. Events, services, and dispatchable that are basically uh, controller. We provide, uh, as I say, the default, uh, a couple of default events. Uh, for instance, we have uh, uh, events named load modules dot PRI means when a uh, module is loaded, before the, the mode is loaded, you can inject uh, uh, you know, the, the code inside uh, uh, these uh, uh, modules. Uh, pre, post, so you can, uh, you can uh, you know, change uh, uh, the events where, uh, basically where you want. We have uh, an event that is a bootstrap, that is executed during uh, you know, the bootstrap of your application. Another event that is a root, that is executed during the routing of your application. Uh, the dispatch, we have also uh, provide a default dispatch error if you know, uh, the controller, uh, uh, the action is not, uh, is not found. We have a render. Uh, we have a lot of uh, you know, a different kind of, uh, of events. And you can use actually the service manager to wire uh, the default workflow to the event listener. So developers provide additional services and service configuration. That uh, is the, uh, the, main, um, the main goal here. And controller, of course, are services. OK, let's start to see a real uh, application in uh, the details. So we provide basically a skeleton application so you, where you can start to, you, to see how to implement uh, application using uh, Zen Framework 2. Um, this is just uh, uh, a couple of lines that can explain you how to install uh, uh, this uh, Zen Skeleton application. So basically, in the GitHub account of Zen Framework, there is this uh, project. Uh, you can just clone it. And uh, as you can see here, we are using a Composer. So it's very easy to install uh, uh, the application uh, using Composer. 
and uh, just calling uh, the install uh, meeting. This is the folder three. So the application uh, basically contains uh, five uh, folders. We have a configuration folder, data folder, module folder, public, and vendor. The configuration, um, of course, this is just uh, you know a proposal for a Zen framework to application. You can, uh, uh, if you don't like this uh, uh, architecture, you can easily change. Uh, the architecture of your application. Because as you know, the framework project is very, very open, so it's very, very easy to change. Uh, uh, there is not strict uh, rule. So this is just, uh, repeat, um, a starter, a proposal. So we have, a, in the configuration folder, we have an autoload uh, folder, where we put basically all the autoloading uh, components. And we have a file that is application.config.php. That is the main configuration file of your uh, application. Here we have an example of uh, application config PHP. So basically, as you can see, we always use uh, PHP arrays in order to configure application. We don't use XML, INI, JAML, or whatever. But it's very, very easy to, if you want to use an uh, INI file or XML file, whatever, just uh, you know, convert um, the file into an associative array, and we provide classes to do that. So we have, for instance, the Zen config uh, components that is able to uh, convert on the fly uh, INI I file in a PHP array, for instance. Anyway, here we have uh, just uh, one modules. The, the name is application. So as you can see here, you basically you put here uh, the list of your uh, modules. Um, here we have uh, some configuration regarding uh, the module listener. So, for instance, uh, where is the, the caching uh, directory, the path of the module, uh, and so on. And we have the service manager configuration. So it's, we are just using the default uh, uh, service manager. The data folder contains uh, the caching uh, folder because uh, in Azure uh, Framework 2 you, uh, you can generate on the fly caching file, for instance, uh, uh, to speed the execution of the reusable object like, uh, you know, um, auto-loading system and, um, and so on. The main, uh, let's say, the main folder is the module. So basically here you put uh, the module of your uh, um, application. So if you think about the Zen Framework 1, um, so basically, in Zen Framework 1, uh, we also support uh, module, but not uh, as default. I mean, you have to change something uh, in, in the flow in order to, to real support modules. And at the end, it was not so easy to isolate the code in the modules for Zen Framework 1. In Zen Framework 2, we built module inside the architecture. So that means it's much more easy now to create your uh, module so uh, components that uh, provide a specific, uh, uh, with specific business uh, needs. And you can reuse the modules in uh, different projects. For, so for instance, if you uh, provide a module that is an uh, authentication uh, uh, module, so login, uh, uh, username, password, uh, and so on, it's very, very easy now to reuse that component in all your projects using uh, Zen Framework 2, because this is just a module, and the module is able to uh, live uh, standalone. So that's why it's, uh, it's strategically uh, important. So uh, you can see here the structure of uh, uh, the module folder. We have the name of the module. Uh, as you can see here, we have three uh, sub-folder uh, where we re reuse the name uh, of the module. So basically, we have a configuration folder. We have a source folder where you put uh, basically your controller. And a view folder. It sounds uh, very similar to the Zen Framework 1 uh, uh, folder 3. In fact, in the source folder, we have a, a controller subfolder with uh, the specific uh, controller of the, this module. And inside the view, we have uh, basically for each uh, um, controller, we have uh, the, the view of the controller. As you can see, we have a, a special uh, component that is module.php. This is basically the file 
that is executed by the Zen Framework 2 uh, MVC in order to know how to instantiate, how to get the configuration, uh, how to connect basically the model with the entire application. Okay, model are I already said just a, a piece of a subset of your project. So if you are able to split your project in a deep, uh, small subset, maybe these subsets are modules. So that's uh, that's uh, the general idea. So a model solve a specific uh, uh, problem. Are basically, uh, as I say, uh, uh, very easy to. Um, to reuse, so our plug and play technology. Uh, everything is a, a, a model uh, in a, a Zen Framework 2 uh, application, and models are just uh, uh, a namespace and a class file. So you have a, a specific namespace for your model, and you have to provide this model.php uh, component in order to uh, create your model. Here there is a, an example of a module. So basically, uh, th this is just uh, uh, the two, method, two methods that you need to provide in order to create uh, a model. So you have a configuration file, you have a get config uh, a method, and get autoloader config. So if you are able to provide this uh, um, module, this class, uh, Zen the Zen Framework 2 MVC architecture is able to recognize, to call, to instantiate this component and to get the configuration. So nothing, uh, nothing so difficult. Uh, of course, you have a lot of options inside uh, your model. So you can, uh, uh, for instance, uh, you can configure the routing system of the Zen Framework uh, 2. So here, this is just uh, an example. We are uh, reusing the, the usual uh, syntax for the routing so of Zen Framework 1. So you have the name of the controller slash the name of the action. Um, as you can see, we, are, we can easily change and configure the routing according to um, specific uh, needs. And of course, we have also uh, a default. We have to define which uh, controller, which action are the default uh, um, controller and default action. So we have a default uh, key here, and you can specify the name of the controller and the name of the action. That in this example are index controller and uh, index action. You can also specify uh, a special uh, name for, uh, you know, uh, routing, like for instance, if you want to provide a home uh, default uh, route, uh, sorry, a home uh, uh, route, you can just uh, you know specify uh, the routing. So in this case, uh, is the the route of your application and the controller and the action related to that route. You can also um, create um, uh, configure controllers. So you can say, OK, this is the root, the router of this controller, and this is uh, the component of the controller. So there are a lot of ways you know, to configure the routing uh, of your application according to the controller. Here we have a, um, an example how to configure the view part of uh, a module. So basically, uh, here we can say for uh, all the routing, all the controller, the view manager is that. So there are a couple of uh, options here. Uh, you can specify, for instance, the doc type of the view. Uh, if the view has a template, uh, some uh, you know um, error management, like uh, not found template, you have to provide a 404 um, code error, uh, and so on. So basically, you can specify also a map. Of course, you can say, OK, the, the layout, uh, uh, my layout are stored here. And you specify the folder of your uh, layout. Uh, the error is that, uh, and so on. 
So as you can see, it's not uh, um, it's very it's very powerful basically because you, using this uh, configuration, you can easily manage uh, you, you know the view manager according to uh, your needs. And this is uh, an example of a controller. Of course, it's just uh, uh, the skeleton. So as you can see, we are extending the Zen MVC controller action controller. And we are using the Zen view model view model. So very, uh, in this case, we have just one, uh, one action that is index. And we are just uh, uh, returning the, the view model. View model basically is uh, a new uh, component of Zen framework that is able to manage uh, uh, the view. So you don't have any more uh, the Zen layout and the Zen view uh, component of Zen Framework 1. We have just the view model. Um, the view model basically is able to manage different view uh, using a tree of view. So you can have uh, the main view, the sub view, the sub sub view, and so on. You can uh, build a tree of view. So that means that uh, you, you, if you want to uh, replicate the same uh, idea of Zen Framework 1 to have a layout and a view. In this way, you can have a big uh, uh, view that is uh, the layout and a subcomponent of this uh, view that is the, the old uh, view, Zen view component. So that means you can uh, uh, easily manage uh, pages that are construct using different, you know, a view coming from different, uh, uh, you know, scenarios. Uh, so, for instance, you can have the, the widget view, the either view, uh, the content view, managed by one model of view. So it's, uh, it's, quite, uh, it's quite powerful. Of course, in this case, we are just uh, uh, returning uh, uh, basically uh, without any parameters. But if you want to pass something to the view, you have just to uh, pass uh, basically an array of parameters in the construct of the, the view model. Very, very simple. Uh, OK, well, uh, let's continue with, uh, with the other folder. So we have, of course, the public folder. So that is uh, basically more or less the same of uh, Zen Framework 1. So you have a couple of uh, subfolder to manage uh, you know, images, JavaScript, CSS, so static file. You have the .htaccess file that is the same of Zen Framework 1. So we didn't change nothing. And we have also the, the index.php. That is the only file that you have to public on the web server uh, folder. And this is the new index.php. So basically, uh, we are using, uh, as you can see here, the service manager. That is uh, you know, the class that helps to configure, to instantiate, to initialize uh, the application. Uh, we are just passing uh, the um, configuration file to the service manager. We are uh, loading uh, uh, the modules. So the flow is basically that. The service manager check the configuration file. In the configuration file, you have uh, the list of the modules of your application. In this way, basically, you are saying, OK, I want to manage the modules of my uh, application. And at the end, you are able to run the application. And as you can see here, the, the keyword uh, uh, application is the name of the model that you want to run as the default uh, model of your application. That's it. So it's not uh, a, couple of, uh, a couple of lines. And of course, we have also the vendor folder where you put uh, the libraries uh, that you need uh, uh, to run uh, the application, for instance, the Zen Framework uh, folder that contains uh, uh, the Zen Framework um, components. OK, I mentioned that we provide a different way to package uh, using uh, Zen Framework 2. So basically, we support Pyrus, that is a peer project, and uh, Composer. So Pyrus is very, very simple to use. You have just to get uh, the Pyrus file, and we provide uh, uh, a URL where you can uh, download it. Uh, so basically, you have to initialize the Pyrus. So the, this, the line 2 and the line 3, you have to execute just one time. 
After that, you can use uh, Pyros. For instance, if you want to install just uh, a component of the entire framework, imagine that you are interested just to use the Zend log component of Zend Framework 2, so you don't want to install the entire framework, just that component. You can easily do that using Pyros, and Pyros basically is able to manage the dependency between uh, the classes. That means if Zend log reuse for instance, the Zend config uh, component is able to download also the Zend config. So it provides you a way to easily uh, install uh, subcomponents um, for the framework. We also support uh, Composer, that is a new packaging uh, uh, management and distribution tool. Um, I strongly suggest if you are not familiar with the Composer to check uh, the website, that is getcomposer.org and also the packages.org that is basically a repository of all uh, you know, the, um, the packaging that you can uh, uh, install uh, using uh, Composer. This is the configuration that we provide for uh, the Composer. So basically uh, we have to specify uh, where is the repository, um, the type of the repository, so uh, the official um, website for the packages of Zen Framework is packages.zenframework.com. And um, you can also specify the require, that means uh, we, which version you want to use. In this case, uh, we are reusing the dev uh, branch, dev master branch, but you can also say, I want to use my application needs, for instance, Zen Framework 2 starting from uh, beta 4. So you can easily do that using uh, Composer or even if you want to um, require a specific um, commit of a branch, you can uh, put the hash of the GitHub commit as requirement. So it's, very, it's a very, very nice uh, uh, way to manage uh, the, the dependency between uh, uh, you know, different libraries, different packages in your application. And the way to install uh, the dependency is uh, straightforward, just uh, execute uh, the composer install uh, command. Okay, how to contribute to the Zen Framework uh, project? So we need you, we need your help. There are a lot of ways to contribute to an open source project. Of course, if you want to contribute writing code, you are more than welcome to do that. But even if, if you, you don't want to write code, just uh, you know, provide uh, better documentation, you want to translate, for instance, documentation in French, maybe, you just want to test, just send uh, feedbacks and comments. There, there are a lot of ways to contribute to an open source, sub, uh, an open source uh, project. And uh, actually, we need a lot of help. Uh, so you are more than welcome, and if you are interested, in uh, you know more information to how to contribute, you can join me after uh, the presentation. I will be around uh, the booth of Zend uh, in the afternoon. And this is the official um, GitHub uh, uh, branch, GitHub account of Zen Framework. So it's Zen Framework slash ZF2. Uh, here I provided a couple of information. So if you want to be involved in the project, I strongly suggest to join the IRC meetings that each week we deliver. Uh, so this is the ZF2 um, uh, meeting uh, uh, channel on IRC. Uh, we have also a specific channel on IRC, this ZF Talk.2. Uh, so you are welcome to join uh, this uh, uh, chat and uh, ask for you know, information or whatever you want to ask. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for uh, your attention. Uh, so please comment uh, this talk. This is the join the uh, account. If you have any other information, you can send me an email or even uh, send me a tweet on Twitter. Thank you again. There are questions? Uh, 
Um, I have a question about uh, learning uh, Zen Framework 2. Uh, do you see any important changes you might uh, do in the main components in the end of the summer? Um, no. Uh, basically, uh, the beta 4 is very close to the API of the release candidate. So we don't want to change, uh, we don't want to break the, the compatibility. So not just to consolidate you know, uh, the class that we release it, so testing or bug fixing, and just release other components that we, we have to, but are service components, so not related to the main architecture. Okay, and a second question. Uh, did you, uh, have you done some benchmarks uh, between Zen for Mark 1 and Zen for Mark 2? Uh, not really. We just uh, run some benchmark only with the new auto loading system. So if you compare uh, that, by the way, you can use uh, the auto loading system of Zen Framework 2 in Zen Framework 1. So we release uh, the, the same uh, components also for uh, Zen Framework 1. And uh, you can easily, so I strongly suggest to check the, the differences of performance. We took from 10% to 80%, 80% of performance improvement just with the auto loading. Because basically the, uh, the main uh, you know, performance boost, boost come from uh, uh, the class map auto loader. That is a, a, a technology that is basically um, a list of all your classes in your project. So it's an associative array where the key is the name of the, um, the class and the value is the path of the file. So if you are able to provide this uh, giant uh, uh, you know, array that configure your application, PHP can you reuse it in order to autoload the class in, and this is the much faster way to do that. Of course, we have also a tool, a command line tool that is able to auto-discover all the classes in your project, so you can easily run on the command line in the root of your application this um, command line tool and is able to generate uh, the class map uh, file for you. In production, of course, you, it's quite easy to, during the deploy of your application, to insert you know, this uh, command line just before uh, you know, the execution of uh, your project. If you are in a development uh, uh, environment, you don't care about uh, performance, you can have just the, the single, uh, the, the, the normal autoloading system. But in production, you can uh, improve a lot the performance. So I suggest to check it out. Other question? I just have a question about the module loading. Is it also okay. possible now to um, implement uh, sub-modules? Sub that I have modules and modules. For example, I want to divide the administration and the front end. So I create two modules within the module without auto detection. Yes, it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very easy now to manage uh, the module uh, architecture because basically we, uh, we rewrite the entire MVC thinking about module. In the Zen framework, the module was not uh, in the plan. And uh, that's why it is, now it's much more easy. Uh, other question? Uh, yes, uh, you spoke about events, services, and dispatchables. And after that, you explained about events and services. But uh, I don't see where was the uh, dispatchables. Uh, dispatchable are basically um, uh, is an interface in the framework too. So if you are able to provide a class that implements this interface, is a controller. So you can inject, you can uh, dispatch this class as a controller. So for instance, if you have a, your project and uh, you have a, you know, uh, some classes uh, related to the, the flow of your application or the business logic, if you just implement uh, uh, the dispatchable interface, you can directly use the class instead of rewrite a controller components. So it's a way to basically to, um, to interact with the MVC of Zen Framework 2. It's just an interface. So if so you implement this, that means that class can be a controller of a Zen Framework 2 MVC architecture. 
just a quick question about uh, dependency injection. You told us that there was three kinds of dependency injection. You showed uh, constructor-based uh, dependency injection, setup-based uh, dependency injection, and you told us there was an interface. Interface. In yes, interface injection, but what is that? It's another way to, um, to pass, to inject uh, uh, basically uh, an object inside a, a class. Instead of say, okay, the, I want to inject this object and this is the class, I provide an interface for this uh, class instead of uh, the class. So it's much more powerful because if you provide an interface, you can easily change the object, the class. If the class implements the interface, no, no problem. So it's just another way to think about the injection. Instead of, okay, this is the class, I just use the interface, so I, I'm more, uh, I have much power to, to change, uh, you know, the behavior of the application if it's an interface. It's only, only that. Uh, I have uh, a little question about everything you don't talk about. Uh, everything we do in uh, Zen Framework 1, yes. like uh, database connection and so on, would it be the same component or at least the same API in Zen Framework 2? Uh, almost. Um, I mean, uh, that's uh, actually uh, can be, um, you know, a problem. Um, uh, I know that, you know, if you just released a giant application with Zen Framework 1, and now you want to uh, refactor or basically use Zen Framework 2, so you have to rewrite uh, everything? Of course, no. Uh, the first question is, are you sure you want to rewrite everything in uh, Zen Framework 2? Because if you don't need, why? So it's a more a business, uh, you know, uh, uh, question. But if you have to rewrite using Zen Framework 2, I can say that 70% of the code is still uh, uh, reusable. You have to change uh, something, of course, uh, uh, regarding the new architecture on VC. So the bootstrap will be different for sure. Uh, some differences in a controller. But the main, uh, the core business of your application remain uh, the same. So not a lot of changes. But of course, you have to change something. It's not, uh, it's not automatically. Uh, we choose to break the compatibility to Zen Framework 1, Zen Framework 2, because we use uh, PHP 5.3. So the framework one works using PHP 5.2, and the framework two works using PHP 5.3. So you have them spaces, uh, you have closure. I mean, there are a couple of uh, differences in the languages, so it was not possible to be 100% uh, uh, retro compatible. But we, our goal is also to release, uh, uh, you know, best practice how to migrate application from Zen Framework 1 to Zen Framework 2. But of course, we have to finish uh, Zen Framework 2 before to provide that tutorial. Other question? That's it. Thank you again.